You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. These are the headlines for the news today, Friday the 9th of March. Fallen soldiers named. UK citizen murdered in Nigeria. Cameron Booth's multiracial adoptions to speed up multiculturalism. Euro News from the Belly of the Beast with Nick Griffin. Pakistani Al-Qaeda leader killed. Sarkozy fighting for his political life in France. Thought for the day, an anti-racist pill. UK News. The brave soldiers who died in Afghanistan have been named as Sergeant Nigel Coop, aged 33, Corporal Jake Hartley, aged 20, Private Daniel Wilford, aged 21, Private Daniel Wade, aged 20, and Private Christopher Kershaw, aged 19. These brave men will be remembered by all nationalists in Britain and will never be forgotten. Our thoughts go out to their families at this time. A UK and Italian citizen have been killed in Nigeria. Terrorists are responsible for the killing after an attempt by its special operation forces had failed. Italian officials are reported to be meeting later today to discuss the failure in freeing one of its countrymen. The terrorists held the victims in the northern part of Nigeria, where the aborted rescue attempt took place. David Cameron is about to open the gates to mixed-race adoption in a bid in what he calls to speed up the system. One spokesperson put it, Multicultural Marxism is now in full swing. If you can't have a multicultural child, adopt one. People who are desperate to have children and want a child of their own race would have no option in the future as to what race they could have. Euro News with Nick Griffin sends this week's report from the belly of the beast from Brussels, although, he tells us, the most important part of my week actually took place some 40 miles north in Antwerp. This was the launch meeting of a new campaign group, Women Against Islamization. I was invited as an MP on account of my long track record of speaking out on the dangers of Islam, but most of all, as my Twitter followers will know already, I was there because my wife Jackie was one of the five ladies speaking on the platform. Women Against Islamization is the brainchild of Anke van der Misch, a lady senator with the Flemish Vlaams Belang Party. It is also supported by other senior VB figures, including the leader of their big opposition bloc in the Flemish Parliament, Philip de Winter, but despite this is an independent, non-party political group. The conference was held in the Great Hall of the 15th Century Hospital building, beneath a magnificent cathedral-like oak-beamed roof. The building has been superbly renovated into a state-of-the-art conference centre. Every last one of the several hundred seats was full, and everyone was pleased that the launch of the Ankers campaign at a press conference and banner unveiling the city centre that afternoon had already been covered quite extensively on the early evening TV news. The first speaker was Judith Wolfarth, a 26-year-old mother who is an active campaigner with the grassroots local German identity party pro nord rhine westphalia Unfortunately, my grasp of her language is up to asking directions and holding a passable exchange of views with a German-speaking dog, so I can only report in the broadest possible terms that she spoke of how women with young children have perhaps more to fear from the creeping advance of Islam than anyone else and that she was proud to be able to do something to help begin, build a Europe-wide resistance to the threat. Jackie was next, and we will release the text and or video of her whole speech shortly, so here too I need not say much other than it was a well-delivered, as I know it would be, since Jackie is experienced to speaking at professional conferences much larger and more daunting than this one. At the reception after the event, Jackie was greeted and thanked by a steady stream of audience members, several of whom said that her message and delivery had moved them to tears. She was also immediately asked if she would speak at other events in future, so I don't think I'm being biased when I say that she was very good indeed. She contrasted the post-First World War struggle of her grandmother, Alice Kell, captain of the Preston-based Dick Kerr's England ladies football team, for equal treatment for women, with the way in which today's left has totally sold out to Islam. Then she explained some of the consequences of that betrayal, particularly for the child victims of Koran-endorsed sexual predation against girls of other communities. Jackie was followed by Anne Kling, a French New Right author and grassroots campaigner in Alsace, who highlighted the way in which the threatened entry of Turkey into the European Union would give a huge extra boost to the Islamization of our homelands. 
Next up was Dr Suzanne Winter, leader of the Freedom Party of Austria's group on Graz City Council. Dr Winter has several times been persecuted in court for her forthright criticism of Islam. In what seemed, to my very limited German, to be a wide-ranging speech, she echoed our analysis of the so-called Arab Spring, which she described as, in fact, being the start of a new Islamist ice age. She also explained the way in which the problems associated all over Europe with some members of the Muslim population targeting young European girls for sexual exploitation were rooted in the example set by Mohammed. The inspirational conference was closed by Senator Anke van der Miesch, who spoke in Flemish, with a result that I couldn't understand a signal fragment of her speech. It's strange that the language that, with the exception of the dialect on the East Frisian Islands, is probably the closest to the English spoken by Harold's men on Senlac Field in 1066, is so impenetrable to our ears today. In keeping with what the left says is a long-standing nationalist practice of blaming immigrants for all our woes, and I blame the Normans. On the subject of linguistic problems, the cooker in my new flat is a high-tech thing from Siemens. It looks rather beautiful, and being fond of cooking by way of relaxation, I was looking forward to using it. Only when I tried to do so the other night did I discover that the elegant brute was in fact designed for nuclear physicists, and had obviously been put on the ordinary household market by error. Undaunted at first, I found the thick instruction manual in the cupboard. Soon be cooking on gas, I told myself, somewhat inaccurately, as it is in fact electric. And I may well have been, if I was French, Dutch, German, Spanish, Italian, a Slav of some sort, or even Turkish. But I searched in vain for the section in English. Displaying the resourcefulness and doggy determination that is our birthright, I did manage to get the oven working properly, and one ring going intermittently. So was able to cook my piece of fish and some spinach, but that was as good as it got. Still, at least I am not alone. The internet is full of desperate pleas from monoglot English owners of the model in question for instructions as to how to get the damn thing to work. So far, nobody has been able to explain anything to us. Of course, I blame the Germans. World News A Pakistani Al-Qaeda commander has been killed in a CIA drone strike last month. Although intelligence already knew about the Islamic terrorist leader being killed, it has taken them a month to report it. The President of France, Nicolas Sarkozy, has been out and about this week, making promises of a minimum tax on large French-based businesses. This move is obviously to gain the votes and probable backing needs to fight in his corner in the election, with other parties closing in fast, including the far right. The Lebanese government is in a row with the US at present over the problem of refugees fleeing from Syria to Lebanon. Lebanese officials have turned the other cheek, as one person put it. The U.S. said that the U.S. ambassador to Lebanon, based in Beirut, had rebuffed his call on the Syrian refugee problem. Thought for the day. The anti-racist pill. I bet you thought it could never happen, did you? It was announced on Meridian News that scientists have discovered that a pill usually taken for heart disease can take away subconscious racist thoughts. Oh dear. Oh very dear. When scientists start to interfere with the human brain, awful things can happen that go way beyond racist thoughts. The term used for this drug were, and I quote, it can be used to combat racist thoughts. What is this with combat? Now, if these good people found a drug, an affordable drug, that is, to us of lesser means, that combated cancer, diabetes, MS, obesity, and or enhanced man's physical existence, I would say good on you. But since when were racist thoughts considered an illness? Everyone is racist or tribalist, even if they are hoodie-hugging UAF supporters. Their thoughts are racist in so far as they have extremely negative thoughts about some of their fellow men who are not so liberally inclined. Got a pill for them? Remember the pill for treating homosexuals some years ago? The left went literally mad, and we have heard nothing more. So let us hear our lefty pals on this one, then. How about a pill for paedophilia, homosexuality, and just general stupidity? That would be good. Racism is a nun word. It didn't even exist before 1930. For all communists, liberals, and general lovey-dovey people, the R word was invented in 1930 by Leon Trotsky, USSR People's Commissar for Army and Naval Affairs, 1918 to 1925. He conceived of the word racist which has remained the single most effective fear word in the leftist arsenal. 
For decades, it has been successfully used in the political arena to slander nationalists and traditionalists, shut down debate, and leave opponents running for cover. In the social arena, they have caused even more damage by using it in schools and universities to brainwash our impressionable youth and to teach people to hate their nation, their cultural traditions, and worst of all, themselves. There you have it in a nutshell. The mere fact that this would be a mind-altering drug being peddled as an anti-racist drug is ridiculous enough, but also very scary. When they put it in our water, will it also do the same anti-racist thoughts to our mad Muslim clerics and disenfranchised black youths roaming the streets of London? Will it turn everybody into great, big, happy blobs of lard, grinning madly at all and sundry? The name Mr Blobby comes to mind. Is that what our government and establishment want for us all? No thoughts at all, or say, some thoughts, but no racist thoughts. So now we will be told what to think, even more than we are now. At least now, we do have some freedom of speech, but when it comes to a stance on racism, we have to bow under the yoke of naughty naughty, or stand in the naughty corner. But at least we can voice our opinions, despite all. With this pill, we won't even be able to think them. My point being, how can anyone with any brain believe that a pill can obliterate racist thoughts only from the brain? If a person doesn't ever have racist thoughts, does this pill go on the rampage, looking for something to erase, rather like a very small Dalek making its way through our pink stuff, yelling, exterminate, exterminate, and the poor soul loses all thoughts and memories? I say, a dark day for England and the world, if ever this one gets off the ground. Or did I say that? Did I? Did I? And finally, about forty sun worshippers cooking themselves on a Brazilian beach suddenly jumped up from their lilos and ran for the sea. The reason? Thirty stranded dolphins, unable to get back into deeper water. The sunbathers went straight into action, helping the dolphins to get out of the burning heat while stranded in the shallows. All the dolphins were saved from certain death by these good people from Brazil. You see, a lot more good comes out of Brazil than coffee. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and we, the team at Radio Britain, wish you all a very safe and happy weekend. <laughs>